Brother Ruben was talking about earlier about um, military training. The philosophy behind military training is the more that you sweat in training, the less you'll bleed in combat. That's one of the things they taught us in the Army when I was in the Army. If you sweat in training, you're less likely to bleed in combat. So the Bible teaches us to sweat and sweat and sweat in training and work for the Lord. And when you're doing that, God will oblige you. He will make you sweat. Because someday, you're going to face possibility of bleeding. And you're going to, like you talk about Martyr's Mirror, we've been reading out of that. You're not going to be prepared for that day, for that day when it comes, unless you've been properly trained. Amen. Yeah. You need to be listening to the Lord in your training. If you would, turn with, with me to your Bibles to Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10, we're going to go to verse 16. I don't have much time, so we're going to have to go a little bit fast, I guess. He says, Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Why would God say that? Why would God send His church? Why would Jesus Christ send His church as sheep into the wolves? I'll tell you why. Because that's exactly what God the Father did with His Son. God the Father sent the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world into a world filled with wolves. So people talked about that earlier, some brute beasts, some creatures, right? Well, God sends cruel messengers to those brute beasts. God sends preachers to the creatures, right? He sends them out into the world, and he's telling you right here in this scripture, it's not a children's birthday party. It's not going to be a little cottage in the woods with a white picket fence. It's not your best life now. Amen. He's sending you as lambs, as sheep, into the wolves. Yes. And just as it says in, in uh, Psalm 22, when it talks about Christ on the cross, a prophetic word about the Messiah on the cross, I'm surrounded by strong bulls of Bashan. Right? Does it say that? Yep. Well, you may find yourself surrounded by wolves, yep. brute beasts. Yep. And God wants to show you how to handle that. Amen. That's what Matthew chapter 10, some of that talks about. He wants to prepare you for that. He wants you to sweat so you'll bleed less in combat. Amen. Today's message, by the way, I didn't tell you what today's message is. It's called Church in the Twilight Zone. The church today, the modern American church, is in the twilight zone. They try to keep one foot in the kingdom of God and one foot in the world. Amen. You can't do that. You can't be an effective minister for God if you're in the twilight zone. Don't be in the twilight zone. Yeah. Be fully in the light. Yeah. The devil has his disciples. They're in the darkness. Yeah. Okay, They're in the darkness. Yeah. We are in the light. The battlefield is the twilight zone. Mm. We want to pull people out of the twilight zone into the light of God. Yeah. Now, when you drove here today or when you flew here, you went to an airport and you looked at the signs. You looked up and it says, oh, I got to, where's my flight? Where's my gate? Oh, my gosh, they changed it. Those idiots. I have to run all the way. To <laughs> anyway, they do that all the time, right? But you, when I drove here, every time I stopped and got gas, I had to get back on Interstate 40 East. When I go back, i got to go west, right? So I have to look at the signposts. I have to look at the signs to determine where I'm going. Jesus here is giving the signs of what it's like to walk in the light. So you'll know. You'll know. And this will be a backhanded way of telling you that you're on the right path. Because as the military also says, you know you're over the target when you start receiving flack. Okay? All right. Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Jesus was harmless as a dove. He never lifted a finger to physically harm anyone. You could tell he was not a Muslim, right? He didn't say, if people say, Jesus is Lord, nobody hits the dirt. But when somebody says, Allahu Akbar, yeah, people panic. So Jesus was harmless as a dove, but wise as a serpent. So you need to be harmless because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Right? They're spiritual. But he's also saying here, don't be stupid. Yeah. Be wise as a serpent means don't be stupid. There is one gift of the Holy Spirit that God promises to all of you. Wisdom. Wisdom. That's exactly right. 
and he'll give it to you liberally to all who ask. Yes. That's the only thing I generally, on a regular basis, ask for myself. Normally when I pray, I'm asking something for you, or I'm asking something for my kids, or I'm asking something for someone else. But what I always ask for myself is wisdom. Yes. I need understanding. I need Amen. wisdom. So I learn to recognize these signposts so I don't get off track. Amen. So I don't end up going on the wrong road, right? Amen. Okay. And he says, but beware of men, for they will deliver you up to councils and scourge you in their synagogues. He's talking about Jews and Gentiles. The Jews will take you to the synagogues because that's their spiritual authority. That's what they did with Jesus, right? And then they will deliver you up to the governing authorities for the, Gen the Gentiles will in the secular government. We, lots of people got up here and talked about courts, right? We all, I've, I've been in two federal lawsuits myself, one both of them. I'm 2-0. and oh. Thank you, Lord. Well, oftentimes we have to do battle with these things, right? We'll end up in those places, and don't be surprised. That's part of the, one of the signposts that tells you you're on the right track. It's telling you you're on the right road, okay? It's telling you you're in the light, and you're not in the twilight zone. All right. You will be brought before governors and kings for my name's sake as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. Remember... Remember that when you are in front of the governors and kings, whenever you are in court, remember who you represent. You've got a lawyer representing you, but you represent a king. Amen. You're an ambassador of Christ who represents a king that sits at the right hand of power, and you better have some respect for God. Amen. You better be careful what you say. Yes. You better be careful what you do, right? You better not dishonor God when you're standing before those governors and those kings. Yes. You better realize there's a higher king that you, that you, uh, that you answer to, right? Amen. A higher king you answer to. That's where the fear of God comes in. Amen. Because you need to fear God more than you fear men. That's right. Yes. Right? That's right? Okay. Now he says, as a, as a testimony, But when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you should speak. So don't worry about it. Don't. God is, has not abandoned you. He's going to tell you that here in just a minute in different words. God has not abandoned you. He knows. He knows where you are. He knows what's happening to you. He has not abandoned you. Amen. So listen to the Lord at that time. Remember, the more you sweat in training, the less you bleed in combat. The more you pray, the more you read the Word, the more you're on your knees listening to God every day, the more likely you are to hear from God in that critical moment when you need Him the most. Yes. Right? Yep. That's, yeah. when, that's when the rubber meets the road. And that's when you really need Him. Well, if you really need Him at that moment, practice needing Him every day. Yes. With the smaller things. Amen. If you're faithful in a little, you'll be faithful in a lot. Yes. He's talking about you're going to be faithful in a lot, but you've got to be faithful in a little to prepare you. Yes. Right? Yes. Remember, you're not practicing. You're not being the church in the twilight zone. No. You're in the light all yeah. the time. No compromise. Amen. That's right. That's no compromise. For it will be given to you in that hour what you should speak. For it is not you who speak, because well, you're an ambassador of Christ, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. It's not you. you don't, it's not your word. It's no. God's word, right? Right. right? But the spirit of your Father who speaks in you. Yes. Right? Mom. Always remembering that what God did with Jesus, He's doing with you. Yes, yes. He's showing you the way. He's telling you this is the way. What was it? Was it Brother J.K. that was talking about followers of the way? Yes. Yeah. This is what the way looks like. Amen. This is what it looks like. Yeah. He's telling you this is what's going to happen to you. Don't be surprised. This is the path. This is the narrow path that right. most people are afraid to follow. Yes. They won't go yeah. down it out of fear. Fear of man, not fear of God. Yeah. Here in a minute, he's going to tell you how you need to be more afraid of what God will do if you don't obey him than what men will do to you if you do. Amen. That's, right? Right. Yep. Yes. That's what he's going to say here in just yes. a minute. Yes. Now brother will deliver up brother to death and father his child and children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put yes. to death. Yes. Some of your closest, uh, yes. brother just told me, he's lost, lost some friends because they're hanging out with you. You bet. Right. Be prepared for that. Amen. Be prepared for the enemies to come from your own household. Yes, yes. yes. 
Yes. Right? Yes. They will. Amen. They come up close. They yes. come up, and the person that can stab you in the back the easiest is the one that pretends to be your friend or the one that is your family member, yes. right? Yes. And they're going to betray you. Yes. Jesus was betrayed. You think you're any better than Jesus? No. 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 He went to that cross because he got betrayed by Judas Iscariot. Yes. Right? right. Yes. He got betrayed. You're going to get betrayed. Yes. It's going to happen. Yes. But it's part of one of the signposts that tells you you're on the right path. He's telling you what it looks like in the light because the darkness hates the light. Therefore, he's telling you this response is a backhanded compliment to your faith. Okay. Praise God. Amen, amen, amen. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. Does it say you're going to be hated by a few? All. All. He's talking about all that are in the world. He's not talking about, you know, Brother Reuben's going to hate you. He's not talking about that. <laughs> He's not talking about Brother J.K. Or, or John or any of us hating each other. He's talking about the world. He's talking about right. everybody that's on the side of the darkness. Yeah. Right. You, think you, get, you think you got some temporary peace by living in the twilight zone? You got another thing coming. Amen. You can't live in the twilight zone without compromising your faith and being on right. the wrong side because you can't serve two masters. Amen. You can't have one foot in the kingdom of God and the other foot in the world. That's where a lot of the modern church is today. And they're not getting persecuted by the world, but the wrath of God abides on them. They've got a greater enemy that just don't realize what's going on. They should be greatly afraid of God. Okay? When they persecute you in this city, flee to another. Now, it says you can flee from the persecution. It doesn't say you can flee from the mission. Yes. It doesn't say you can flee from speaking the truth. It says you can flee from the persecution. Jesus went from place to place to avoid being killed until it was his time, right? He did. So, you know... If, if Brother Rich gets persecuted too much here, it's okay if he moves to Texas. I'm going to invite him. <laughs> so, anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking for Texas here. I'm putting in, putting in my two cents worth. <laughs> for assuredly, I say to you, you will not have gone through the cities of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. If we think that we can go to church on Sundays and Wednesday nights and we're okay with God and the world does not come against us that we're okay with God in that um, then obviously we're thinking we're something better above Jesus better than Jesus hmm. Jesus didn't go to the resurrection without going through that yes. you're yes. not gonna get there either yes. you're gonna have to go through the cross to get to the resurrection. It's the only way there is. Yes. That's why Jesus said, pick up your cross daily. Yes. Because that's the path. That's the way. You go through the cross to get to the resurrection. The victory is on the other side of the battle. Yes. If you shy from the battle, if you run from the battle, the victory is never yours. Yes. Amen. You never get victory. That's right. Yes. It's always on the other side of the battle. Amen. Amen. You must go through it. Yes. And God will prepare you for it yes. in training. Yes. In training. The more you sweat in training, the less you'll bleed in combat. You're not getting trained in the twilight zone. You're only Amen. getting trained in the light. Amen. Yes. A disciple is not above his teacher nor a servant above his master. It is enough for a disciple that he be like. So you don't have to be, you don't have to be perfect. You're never going to be perfect in your knowledge and wisdom. You're never going to fully understand. Even the angels don't fully understand God because the Bible says there are things that, that angels desire to look into. They don't have perfect knowledge any more than you do. So don't expect that you're going to be completely flawless in every way, but you need to be like your master. Yes. You need to be like your master. And you know what? The more you look like your master, the, one of the, the more they're going to put you on one of those. Yeah. The more you look like Jesus, the more they're going to persecute you yes. like they did Jesus. Yes. Amen. That's the truth. Amen. Because that's the way. Yes. It's not sunshine and little white flowers. Yes. You know, it's, it's persecution. Be Amen. prepared for that. Amen. Be prepared for that. Yeah. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, the devil. They called him the devil. If they called Jesus the devil, do you know they called Jesus' mother a whore? Yeah. 
They yeah. Did, and they they said, oh, we were not born of fornication, right. like some people here, you know. Yeah, right, right. They yeah. were calling his mother a fornicator, a whore. Yeah. They called him, don't, don't be surprised they call you a whore, your mother a whore, right? Yeah. yeah. Some people get on Facebook and call people whores oh, and they my. shouldn't be doing it. Don't be surprised. This happens. Come on. How much more will they call those of his household? Yes. Okay. Therefore, do not fear them. Do not fear them. Amen. For there is nothing covered that will not be revealed and hidden that will not be known. Everything they, every false lie they've ever told about you, every false accusation, because the word devil is a Greek word, it's not translated. If you do translate it English, it means false accuser. Every false accuser that comes against you, the truth will be revealed on the day of judgment. And they will be humiliated in front of the whole host of heaven. Yes. Yes. They will. Because the truth will come out. Amen. All of it. Yes. So you better be careful on your own behalf too. Because the truth that you've been maybe hiding, it's going to come out too. <laughs> yes, it will. Make yourself pure, right? Amen. Be in Amen. the light. Yes. Not in the twilight. Don't be in the twilight yes. zone. Therefore, do not fear them. Whatever I tell you in the dark, speak in the light. And what you hear in the ear, preach on the housetops. Now, keep that statement in context of the next. And do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able oops, to destroy both body and soul in hell. Right. Why is he saying that? Because when you do that, you're going to get opposition. He's telling you this in context that when you preach, and let me explain preaching from the housetops, what that means. If you were in Jerusalem back in the day, and of course he's speaking to Jews here, remember? So if you were in Jerusalem back in the day, all the houses were built wall to wall to wall to wall like that. And you didn't have modern roadways like we do now where you've got big wide lanes where big old trucks can pass each other and you've got medians and you've got right of ways and sidewalks and the property lines are set way back. No, you had a little narrow street about the size of a cart that could go through there, or maybe a donkey, and your neighbor basically lived like a sidewalk's distance away across the street. When you <coughs> preached on the housetops, all your neighbors heard it. Now, he's saying here that you're going to tell all your neighbors, and they're all going to hate you for it. Amen. Because the darkness hates the light. Yeah, it does. Right. But you're going to know you're on the right path when you're doing this. Amen. You're walking in the light. Yes. That's what he's saying here. Okay? Amen. Amen. Now, are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin and not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will? Here he's telling you, look, if a sparrow is not outside of my will, don't think I've forgotten you when this persecution comes. Yes. I have not forgotten you. I don't forget the sparrows. I know the numbers of the hairs on your head. And we joke about that all the time because God doesn't count as far with me as some of it does you. <laughs> but God knows everything about you. He knows more about you than you do. Yes. I don't know how many hairs I got on my head. Uh. Well, I got less than I used to have, but I don't know how many. God knows. God knows every star in the sky, and they're all named. Yes. I couldn't possibly do that. Amen. Science can't do that. Right. So he knows everything, and he knows about you, and he has not abandoned you. He's letting you go through this for some reason. Yes. Why? Yes. Because he's training you for the day, and the, your good day of personal garden of Gethsemane moment, when you are going to be looking at, Lord, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Yes. In other words, I would rather die than sin. Yes. I would rather die than disobey. Yes. I would rather go to the cross right. yes. than live in the twilight Amen. or in the darkness. Yes. Yes. I would rather go to the cross than betray my Father in heaven. That's what Jesus was saying. Yes. That's what you need to say. Amen. Okay? But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore, you are more, va more value than many sparrows. And certainly you're more valuable than hair, right? Amen. So he considers you more valuable, so he is watching. Yes. He is watching. He is there. He has not abandoned you. Amen. There is a reason for it. Yes. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men... Oh, so in the midst of the persecution, you still got to confess Christ. Amen. Okay? Remember, we got to keep this in context. 
Yes. He's talking about persecution. He's talking about this is what the way I'm sending you out, and this is what it's going to look like. Right? Yes. So he's telling you, therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven, but whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Yes. This is what persecution is designed to do. You ever notice that in Martyr's Mirror when they're saying they try to get you to denounce your faith, they try to get you to recant your faith? Yes. That's the whole purpose. Come on. To get you to turn your loyalty back to the devil and away from God. Come on. That's what it's designed to do, to yes. put pressure on you. Yes. Cancel culture isn't new. It's been practiced since the dawn of time. It's been practiced ever since Christ went to the cross. That was cancel culture in Jesus' day. They were trying to cancel Christianity by killing the shepherd so they would scatter the flock. That's what they were trying to do. But they weren't very smart because God had a better plan. And God has a better plan for you. And He's going to send His church to finish the work He began. It's for us to walk the same path that he started. Yes. We have to complete our own path like he did. Amen. And the church is continuing on its mission, following down the, the true church. The real church is not in the twilight zone. Yes. The real church is in the light. It walks in the light. It looks at the signposts. It sees the signs. It follows them and says, you know, I must be doing something right. If the devil's mad, I must be making God happy. Amen. Right? right? If the yeah. devil is mad at you, it's because God is pleased with you. Yes. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise him. Praise him. He says if you if you confess him in the midst of this persecution, he'll confess you, but if you deny him, he'll deny you. Because you've turned your back on him. You've wow. allowed yourself to fold like a bad hand of poker and you have gone back over to the other side. Yes. Do not think that I came to bring peace on the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. Yes, yes. That's the sword. Yes. Yes. Right there. He brought this to the earth. Amen. He himself was the living manifestation of the word of God. Amen. He is the sword. Yes. This is the sword or recording of the sword. Yes. Amen. Do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. He's taking responsibility for the division. He's saying it's my truth that's causing it. It's not you. When your family is divided from you, when your kids won't speak to you anymore, when my brother, I got a brother who won't even friend me on Facebook, that's not my fault. That's, yes. right. that's God taking responsibility. The brothers and sisters, the truth divides. Yes. Yes. The truth divides. Yes, it, it divides the light from the darkness, darkness, and the darkness hates the light. Yes. So if you're in the light, it's gonna, they're going to hate you, yes. and it's not your fault. Yes. God's taking responsibility for it right here. Amen. Jesus is. He Amen. says, this is my responsibility. Amen. Do not think I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I've come to set a man against his father, a daughter against his mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's enemy should be those of his own household. Jesus is doing this with the word. Amen. It's not your fault. Mm. Don't worry about it. Do not fear your family. Yes. Do not fear them. When they persecute you, confess Christ anyway. Yes. Otherwise, you run the risk of Jesus not confessing you in the kingdom of God. Amen. Yeah, that's right. Remember, you need to be more afraid of what God will do to you if you don't do it. Yes. Yes. Remember, when you were a kid, when you were a kid, and your parents sent you to clean your room, and, um, and you went in there, and you, um, you didn't clean your room, you went in there and you played with your toys. Well, you got in trouble, right? Yeah. So they came in there an hour later and went, what, you've been playing with toys this whole time? Your room's still a wreck. Okay? What happens if Jesus comes back and catches us playing with toys? Mm -hmm. What happens? Are we going to get in trouble? Yeah. You bet we're going to get in trouble because we're supposed to be cleaning up this mess. Yeah. That's our job. Yeah. Our job is to help clean up this mess. Our job is not to spend our lives in the twilight zone playing with toys. Yeah. Yeah. Sports cars are toys. I got guns. They're toys. Yeah, I admit. But they, they have to serve a function. I like guns. But I tell you what, I have sold a lot of guns because God told me to. I used to own dozens of guns. 
dozens. And God said, you need to get rid of those. You need to sell those and use them for mission trips. And I did. Amen. I sold them. I got rid of, I went, I went, there was a time I went through my house and said, get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that. Sell it all. Amen. Sell it all and pursue the kingdom of God. Yes. Yeah. And God will add things back to you. That's right. You know, Hallelujah. don't worry about it. Yeah. You know, it's not your best life now. Amen. It's your best life. If it's your best life now, you're on your way to hell. Amen. I see Reuben standing here, so I got to conclude. I see you over there, brother. Can't see in the peripheral. Can't I can see in the peripheral. Right down here, he says this. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me. So he's talking about sacrifice. Right. Yes. That's the path. Uh -huh. that's, the, that's the road. That's the Amen. light. He does not take his cross and follow me. He is not worthy of me. Yes. That's a strong warning. Yes. Yes. And he who finds his life will lose it. Yes. But he who loses his life, and maybe his guns, and his cars, and his stuff, and his relationships with his family and his children and his friends, his so-called friends, and you lose all these things for the sake of Christ, you'll find eternal life in Jesus yes. Christ. That's what I'm saying right here. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother David. I appreciate that. Hallelujah. And uh, in the future, brother, when you sell some weapons, please give me a call. <laughs> <laughs> Just, you know. Deal, man. <laughs> You know, it's interesting. This Matthew chapter 10, uh, this is when yeah. Jesus sent out his...